I don't know what it is about Wiltshire, but this is the second week in a row I've come here to film an episode of Swipe featuring men who can fly. Last week it was all about a wingsuit, this week a jet-powered one. <laughs> This video of British inventor Richard Browning testing his jet-powered suit has been watched more than a million times. The ex-city trader and former Royal Marine Reservist has no formal engineering training, but he does have a huge amount of curiosity, as I discovered when visiting him at home in Wiltshire. Yes, so this is the, uh, the lab. This is where... Um I've spent quite a bit of time over the last 18 months uh, developing the, uh, the jet suit. Is this the very suit that you wear? That is, yeah. We, we, we suspend it all in that place just so you can connect it up and test it. Um, but yeah, that is, that is pretty much all the equipment. You, you have a pair of engines on each arm, so that's one arm, there's the other arm, and these ones actually go around my, uh, around my waist at the back. Each engine then is plugged into, uh, into one of these brains. And then we get up here. This is a holographic heads-up display helmet from the company called Daiquiri. Um, it's a pretty neat piece of kit. It, uh, displays all the uh, engine data and fuel consumption data that uh, gets wirelessly transmitted by the suit. So it's, um, it's a very neat way of being able to monitor the system and uh, monitor our fuel. So it's, it's giving you information on the inside of the visor? Yeah, it's kind of hovering in, in a, like a fighter pilot kind of heads up display. So if you'd like to have a look and see what I see when I'm flying it. <gasps> Ooh, this is heavy. How, how much would this cost? Uh, Daiquiri sell these now for about $15,000. Um, this is the only black one in existence. They very kindly built us a, a really quite customised one. Okay, I think, I think maybe it's a bit big for me. The suit cost Richard less than £100,000 to create, but the hundreds and hundreds of man-hours from him and his team, he says, have been the greatest expense. And if you're wondering why he even began the project... Uh, if I'm really honest, it was uh, the starting point was just to have an enormous amount of fun taking on the challenge of human flight, but from a very different perspective. Taking it on from the idea of uh, leveraging the human mind and body, and then adding to that rather than putting the human form in a flight vehicle. You know, what would what would be possible if you really leverage the mind and body capability? So, time to find out more about Richard's mind and body capabilities. We're heading to a nearby farm, his testing ground, a few minutes away. It's suiting up time, and there's a lot to consider. Oh, I forgot one of those GSU things again. Never mind, it'll all work perfectly. Uh, Deb, can I have your help in a second? Richard's wife seems to be used to this part of the operation, helping him buckle up and get ready. Does this not worry you? Uh, it did initially when he first told me about the project and what he was aiming to do. Um, but since I've been following it for the last few months, um, I understand how it works a little bit more. It is not as bad as it looks, and I might even possibly have a little go myself with the arm engines at some point. That's a fireproof suit you're wearing, yeah? Uh, yes, it is. There's a, there's a fireproof base layer underneath all of this. That's just really a precaution. Even though the fuel is um, usually diesel, paraffin or jet fuel, it, it's really you know, not particularly dangerous. It doesn't turn into a vapour cloud. It doesn't suddenly spontaneously ignite. It's all very much sealed up in the uh, fuel tank system. Warming up the engines takes about 90 seconds and it's noisy. You can smell the fuel and feel the intense heat. Here we go. Richard says the suit could fly thousands of feet high and at speeds of several hundred miles per hour. The only thing stopping him from doing that is the danger risk. He controls the direction of the suit by adjusting where he points the engines. It's a very strange um, feeling, a bit like riding a bike in three dimensions. You don't really think about what you're doing when you're riding a bike. It just happens. The balance is quite natural. Richard's team is now working on a second, more advanced version of the suit, and even a children's option that apparently won't involve jet engines, but still aims to give wearers a superhero feel.